So Manchester United on Tuesday night, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer takes charge of his first ever game as Manchester United manager and what a game to do in Paris Saint-Germain. Arguably one of the hardest draws that Manchester United could have got, but Solskjaer is flying high. United right now are flying high. You know, PSG on the other hand, you know, have had a somewhat sketchy January as far as PSG is concerned anyway. But to chat about that and to give you a bit of insight about PSG ahead of the game, I'm joined this morning, thank you very much, by Jonathan Johnson, a French football expert and writer for ESPN, Paris-based, and he knows about PSG, certainly more than I do. So thank you very much for your time this morning, Jonathan. Uh, thanks a lot for having me on. Well, let's get straight into it, I suppose. The, the first thing I want to talk about is PSG in January. You know, they lost to Green Gamp, I think, in the League Cup. Uh, by, all, by their standards, it was a, a slightly sketchy month. You know, Thomas Tuchel wanted two players in the January transfer window. At the end of the day, PSG got Paredes in, which is better than nothing. So they have boosted the midfield slightly. Um, there are still question marks uh, over how much, how, how great the, the depth available to Thomas Tuchel is in that position at the moment with Adrian Rabiot off limits because of his uh, contract um, issue with, uh, with with PSG. Yeah, going out in the Coupe de la Ligue was a, was a disappointment, like you mentioned, against Gangon. But we saw what PSG can do when they really put their minds to it against Gangon because a few games later, they thrashed them 9-0. The, the, the cup exit was particularly bizarre for PSG to be conceding three penalties in a match were, was was very, very odd. And it was only through penalties that Gangon were able to win that game. So I don't think we should be reading too much into that. Uh, also with PSG being taken to, uh, to to 120 minutes by third tier opponents in the Coupe de France. Yeah, there's been, there's been a mixed bag of performances. First league and loss away at Lyon as well. Uh, but, but Tuchel has been trying his best uh, to put together a, a passable midfield ever since Rabiot was uh, was was banished from the from the senior picture, so it's it's not been an ideal time for for Tuchel since uh, the end of 2018, really. And obviously, going into this game, the headline is going to be that Neymar will not play for PSG, but it sounds like Cavani is going to be missing as well. Thomas Mounier, also an important player for PSG. Verratti's overcome his injury to return against Bordeaux, but. How much of an impact are these injuries going to have on how PSG could play against United? Oh, massively. I mean, Neymar's taken on a bit of a, a talismanic role, really, at PSG, similar to that of, of Zlatan Ibrahimovic. I think that PSG is still capable of winning games, uh, big games without him, but obviously with Cavani out as well, that's another big blow. Munier, in terms of the starting eleven, I don't think would have actually been used at right back. I think... The idea all along for Tuchel has been to make the defence as solid as possible. So Tilo Carrer will be there. Uh, Munier could have been used further forward, and I think that role will now fall to Dani Alves. Potentially bring Paredes on, or does he, you know, uh, take a big, big risk and put Paredes in from the start when uh, the chemistry is not quite there with his new teammates? Well, we'll have to wait and see, but obviously missing Neymar, missing Cavani, uh, both big blows, very obviously. Uh, but Tuchel does have the attacking talent available to him in his squad, uh, you know, to be able to rejig things and, and, and make a, a team that can still threaten United, particularly on the counter-attack. I mean, you know, there's still Kylian Mbappe to lead the line, uh, and Helsinki Maria, who Manchester United fans will know all about, uh, and Julian Drexler as well, who is a very versatile attacking talent, could play out wide, but could also play in the middle in something of a number 10 role. So, uh, you know, I don't think that United should be looking at this thinking, while well, Neymar and Cavani are out, so... We're on easy street. Well, I hope I don't think that United will be that complacent. But how how has Tuchel uh, changed the team? What formation would you expect to see PSG use? You know, because you know Mbappe said before the game. You know, if you take Ronaldo out of Juventus, Juventus would struggle. If you take Messi out of Barcelona, Barcelona will struggle. But you know, is Neymar that sort of player for PSG? Because you know, from outside looking in, it was Mbappe who had a sensational World Cup and is. Is he taking on, a, you know, not a talismanic role in the same sense as Neymar, but is Mbappe just as important to this PSG team? Mbappe is important, but, uh, you know, I think there's different levels of importance. And I think in terms of the PSG that Tuchel has been building since he arrived, Neymar is more important at this moment in time. Could that change in the future? Yes, and I'm sure it will do. Uh, one thing that is that is certain is PSG are much stronger when you have both Mbappe and Neymar on the pitch at the same time. Their partnership has been, you know, something that's, that's truly a wonder to behold. It was really, really, uh, you know, starting to blossom nicely towards the end of 2018. And then obviously Neymar getting injured at the start of 2019 uh, was not what Tuchel would have wanted at all. Uh, I, it's, yeah, obviously uh, Bappe is right. Take, take star players like Neymar, 
uh, out of out of the PSG side, and it's not going to be the same team. But Tuchel has been working on PSG's chemistry since he arrived, and I don't think that all of that chemistry that we saw uh, in the the turnaround that PSG showed in the group stage to go from losing that opening match late on against Liverpool, being held at home by Napoli to you know to go on the top of the group, will have completely disappeared with with Neymar and Cavani being ruled out. Cavani is particularly good uh, when it comes to uh, you know mucking in and um, you know putting the team first. But, uh, you know, Neymar, to his credit as well, has been uh, much more um, focused on the team this season than he was last season. Uh, so, you know, I think they, they both will be misses uh, in their own different ways. But I still think that PSG, uh, you know, will be united enough uh, to be able to, you know, to, to come away from Old Trafford with at least a draw. And I, I think that's what a lot of people, uh, you know, are overlooking as well. You know, the fact that even when the draw was made, United was struggling under Jose Mourinho. PSG were, you know, were, were seen as heavy favourites to, to advance. Coming away from a place like Old Trafford uh, on the on the continental scene for for almost any club, uh, you know, is going to be viewed as a positive result. And that mission hasn't changed with all of these losses uh, of players through through injury. You know, PSG's goal uh, remains the same. If they can come away from Old Trafford with, uh, with, with a draw, perhaps even an away goal, then they're in a good position ahead of the second leg. And obviously, United will be going into this full of confidence because of how things have changed under Solskjaer. But PSG really are one of the best teams in Europe. But obviously, you're going to be without Neymar. They're going to be without Cavani. But that doesn't mean that you don't, that PSG, sorry, don't have that quality up front. Like you're saying, Drax is still there, Di Maria is still there, Mbappe is still there. What weaknesses would you say that this PSG team currently have that you feel Solskjaer will be looking to exploit on I Tuesday night? I think Solskjaer night? has to target PSG's midfield. You know, Verratti half fit, Paredes only just joined, uh, Marquinhos normally a defender playing a makeshift role. Uh, I think if United can seize control of the midfield as early on as possible, uh, you know, then that gives them a really good chance of not winning not only this opening leg, but, you know, beating PSG over the two legs. Because I think in terms of the midfield, which is PSG's uh, Achilles heel at the moment in terms of, uh, you know, the, the different outfield positions, uh, I, I think that they will be much stronger <laughs> by the time the second leg rolls around. And I think we can expect, assuming that they're both fully fit, uh, to see Verratti and Paredes, two natural midfielders, paired together at that point. Rabiot might even be back in contention by then, uh, you know, which would, which would complicate things further for United. So United need to maximise uh, or, you know, take, take advantage, really, of PSG's flaky midfield at this point in time because it's no guarantee that they'll be as weak uh, in the middle come the second leg. I mean, United, if we can get, I suppose, you know, even a draw for United would be good going into that second leg. But what would your match prediction be for this match? Obviously, you say a draw would be good for PSG and an away goal. But what do you think the game, how do you think the game will go? I, I think that PSG are capable of this. Uh, it's, it's why I keep talking about a draw being a positive result. I think PSG still have enough uh, to come away with a, uh, with a score draw. So I'm going to say it's, uh, it, it, it's, it'll finish 1-1. Uh, I, I think there'll certainly be some hairy moments for PSG. Uh, you know, there'll be moments when United are knocking on the door, applying a lot of pressure. Uh, but I think that this PSG side have shown uh, a lot of grit, a lot of determination since Tuchel has arrived. You know, it's a new sense of uh, togetherness that, that we haven't really seen from PSG in the last couple of years, particularly when Unai was in charge. Uh, you know, I think that, uh, you know, I, I think that pe people are being a bit too hasty in writing PSG off because of uh, the absences of Neymar and Cavani. Well, a score draw, I think all United fans would take that because if we can go to PSG with a score draw, knowing that an away goal could make all the difference out there, that's what we want to see. I mean, it's been some time since United fans have, have gone into a game like this. So, you know, these, are, these used to be the big occasions at Old Trafford. But over the last few years, we've lost that edge. Solskjaer has brought that back straight away. So I'm excited to see what happens on Tuesday night. And obviously PSG without Neymar is a PSG team that United should be more confident of beating. But as you say, there's still plenty of talent in that team. So let me know what you think in the comments below. How confident are you feeling ahead of the game? Hopefully this little chat that I had with Jonathan, thank you very much for your time today, Jonathan, has shown you a little bit of insight as to what's going on behind the scenes with PSG and how maybe they can cope very easily without Neymar.